Number one, your words. Be careful what you say. Especially when you are under pressure or you are panicking or pressured about something. Be careful what you say. If you love your life and you love to see many days, says, Watch how you use your tongue. Watch how you exercise your mouth. If you love your life and you want to see many days, it's not about many days of enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Would you like to enjoy life? How many of you want to enjoy life? Everyone, if you are not lifting your hand, Maybe you didn't understand my question. Because there is no one who would not want to enjoy life. No, do you like to enjoy life? Says, do you want long life and happiness? Verse number 13. Verse 13. Psalm 34. Then keep from speaking what? If. Mm. And from telling lies. You know the lies he's talking about. I don't think some of us can be married. It's a liar. I don't think some of us can be promoted in this company. My friend, you are speaking evil. Anything you are saying about yourself that is not in line with God's will for you is evil. Number two, number two, number two. Many years ago, when I came back from the office, my wife asked me, How was your day? I said it was fine. And she said, Daddy. You mean there are no things at your office that sometimes you can, for example, complain about that to say that maybe my boss did this. I said, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, 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 even if there was, that cannot come from this mouth. Uh, uh, I want long life. Give me verse number 12. That is what I want. Come on. Psalm 34 verse 12. Mm. I want to enjoy life. So he said, caution, 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 caution. Be careful how you exercise your tongue. Because in Proverbs 18 verse 20, Proverbs 18 and verse number 20. The Bible says, A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. Whether your stomach will be full or not depends on your mouth. Stop this blame game, all this, all this, all this. No, sir. All this, all this, all this. No, sir. Politicians are not helping us. Did they promise to feed you? Hmm. You're wasting your time. Look after yourself. Watch your mouth. Proverbs 6 2. Mm. Proverbs 6 2. 6 verse 2. Yes. You are snared by the words of your mouth. Not by the words of the uncle, sir. Your own words. Since you are taken by the words of your mouth. Taken by the words of your mouth. So words carry taking power. What is it, sir? Taking, taking power. power. Taking, taking power. power. 
depending on what words you are speaking, you may be taken into financial oblivion or financial dominion. And today, Malawians are fond of saying, but ground, but what? But but Yes. If I took you look and you Hallelujah. Amen. You know what the Bible says? Some of you don't know what the Bible says. Let me show you what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew 12. I don't have time to read from verse 34 to 37. Give me verse 36. Verse 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it. Idle words. He says you will be held accountable. Mm. Is it making sense here? Yeah? Yes. Some of you are thinking you are not you That language is not the language of God's children. It is true now. The Holy Spirit cannot give you such inspiration to speak such words. Am I right here? Now hear me. It says, watch your words. And God knew that Joshua was going to encounter, for example, the River Jordan. When you arrive at the River Jordan, you will find it flooding. Don't talk floods, talk the law of the Lord. Talk what God has said. He has said you're entering the land of promise. Therefore, you are not going to talk floods. You are not a geologist. Mm? Are you a marine expert? You No, I think the, the way the river Jordan is flooding. What are we going to do? Don't talk that. It says, your word, this book. This book, whether you encounter River Jordan, whether you encounter the walls of Jericho, this book must be in your mouth. Talk it, talk it, confess it, declare it. Mm. Listen to me. What you say is what you see. What you talk is what you take. What you confess is what you possess. When God said, let there be light. Genesis 1, please. Genesis 1, Verse number 3. When God said, let there be light. There was light. Now hear me. Verse number 4. And God saw the light. So the conclusion is what you say is what you see. Eventually see. Mm. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Words. Mau. And then thoughts. You shall meditate therein. Day and night. So, it's talking about your thoughts. Thinking. Thinking. Your thoughts. The 
quality of your thoughts will determine the quality of your life. The quality of your what? Your life. Your thoughts. In others, life. Please, I want to give you a principle. Life will always assume the direction of your dominant thoughts. Your life will always assume the direction of your dominant thoughts. If you are always thinking about killing yourself, one day you will attempt it. Yeah. If you are thinking about dying, you know some people when they get sick, Especially when pastor visits. Pastor and Mpanga ufa. Yes. Yeah. Meditation. Kulingalira. So when you check your Bible, God does not just react to what we say. He also reacts to what we think. Because what you say and what you think is the same before God. It's the same. Is it making sense here? Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Ephesians 3 verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask mm. or what? Think. Think. Mm. So we have overemphasized talking and we have neglected thinking. And yet, before God, the two are at par. Whether you say it or you think it, God hears it the same way and he reacts to both the same way. That is why in teaching about adultery, Matthew chapter 5, is that 29 to 31, thereabout. Mm. Now, now, let's go there. Let's back up, back up to 27. Now, I want you to see this. Now listen, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. Mm. Now hear me. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman mm. to lust for her, mm. to lust for her, what is that? It's imagination, your thinking. Visualization. Visualization. You close your eyes and you think that look, the way this woman is looking, my God. Now, you last for her. You have already committed adultery with her in your heart. That's how God looks at it. It's not about your imagination. So in Nahum 1, Nahum 1 and verse number 9, verse 9, there is a question. Parifuso. Can I have this verse in um, King James? Have they seen that? It says, what do you imagine? Would, it's talking about imagination. What do you imagine against the Lord? Somebody was imagining something against God. And God reacted. Said, I shall make an utter end of whatever you are imagining. Now, if you are not careful, you will be in heaven. 
Kumamba. When you read your Bible, Bible in Isaiah chapter 14, beginning verse 12, going down to 14, Isaiah 14, 12, 14. the devil, Satana, yes, began to think. Verse number 13. Listen to this. It says, You have said in your heart, not with your mouth. No, there was no audible sound. But there was thinking. The devil began to think. Lucifer, he calls him Lucifer. Began to think. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation. That is number three there. Number four, verse 14, please. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Number five, these are what we call the five I wills of Lucifer. So number five is, I will be like the most high. Hmm. He said in his heart, not with his mouth. And God reacted. He said, you cannot be here. Move out of here. Revelation chapter 12. Verses 7 to 9. A war broke out in heaven. On that five I wills. War broke out in heaven. God said, I cannot fight my creature. Michael, do the job. And Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Verse number nine. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old caught the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth. Mm. Is it making sense here? Mm. The reaction was to what he said in his heart. Let me ask you, let me ask you, you. When you receive your best sleep, those of you that are still Receiving physical pay slips in your workplaces. <laughs> and you see that balance. balance. There, the take home pay. That they have given you for that month after deducting tax and loans and uh, welfare, whatever, and so, so many things they have deducted, pension, mm. and then you have that amount. amount. What do you say in your heart? Either about the money, about yourself, about your prospects, about your possibilities. What do you say? Some of you are sinking financially because of how you have been thinking financially. Tell your wife, those that are married. And you know, married people can deceive themselves. And hmm. Honey, I don't know. I don't know. Only God knows. Hmm. You know, I have tried. I have tried, but uh, I have tried to make you happy. But uh, hmm. my wife. <laughs> And then your wife, so your wife now will be kissing you. And uh, it's okay. It's not that I'm complaining. <laughs> Big man, be careful. Your thoughts. Some of you have wrong attitude towards money. You need to read my book, Working in Financial Dominion. I've given about 21 wrong attitudes towards money. The way you think. Yeah. Some of you, when money comes, your mind switches off like TV. 
maganizano ama tima ngati tv you can't think you can't think simungaganize so yai until your money finishes that is when your mind switches back and then you come to pastor you say papa i think that devil is a liar <laughs> no sir you are lying to yourself change the way you think so that you don't stink and then lastly God says to Joshua He says my friend you want to prosper watch your actions Number one, your words. Number two, your thoughts. Number three, your actions. It says, act in line with the principles of the book. To mean that there is no success without what to do. No victory, no progress, no abundance without action. You know, what responsible people say. Acts 237. Acts 237. Men and brethren. What shall we do? What shall we do? What shall we do? These are men of responsibility. These are people that believe that nothing happens for nothing. These are people who believe that if anything is going to work, work must be done. If anything is going to work, if my finances are going to work, there is work that I must do. There is work that I must do. If you think money will just come like many people think no action you are joking you are joking money does not just come there is what to do God told Joshua he said you shall be careful to observe to do what is written. Mm. So sometimes I ask people, my friend, Zanga, what do you do? Um, Recently I asked one young man, I said, what do you do? His answer was nothing. Nothing. You see, God has programmed that he shall bless us through what we do. If you are doing nothing, nothing will accrue to you from God. That's the truth. Simple arithmetic has told us that no matter the figure, if you multiply it by zero, the answer is what? Zero. 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 So God may have one million blessings for you. But if you have zero work, one million blessings for you. The answer is what? Zero, zero blessings. A figure of any size multiplied by zero, the answer is zero. zero. That explains why 
poverty is rampant in Africa. Because there are so many non-working hands doing nothing. So God is releasing his blessings on zero. And the answer is what, sir? Zero. Because Paul said, he who does not work with his hands, he must not eat. So non-workers are usually non-eaters. Because Isaiah 3.10 is very clear. Say to the righteous, it shall be well with them. For they shall eat the fruit of their doings. So what you do is what determines whether you shall eat or not. Not to do anything is to refuse to eat. And even if, if you wanted to eat, you will not be permitted to. Because men eat from the fruit of their doing. So, and I like it because doings is plural. Doings. Doings. That is, don't have just one thing to do. No, have what? Doings. Because so many people, their reliance is only on monthly salary from their employer. And some of them are so married with it. That so much that if they said, you are no longer our employee. The way the man is going to feel, it will be as if they have chopped off his head. He can even commit suicide. He said, Adati. you shall eat the fruit of your doings. Mm. Are you into business? Don't just do one type of business. Have several. Because of what? Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6. Mulalik 11 verse 6. Very clear. Nena mufeka bwino. In the morning, sow your seed. Mama wa fesambeo. And in the evening, ndipo mazulo, do not withhold your hand. Usasie kufesa ako ya. New Living Translation. Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon. Hmm. For you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another. So it means don't have one activity. I'm talking to you. Especially those of you that have only one activity. Now, the Bible is not being pessimistic. It's being wise. Bible, says when you plant your seed in the morning don't sit down and just you know sing and celebrate that you have planted no, I have something again to do in the afternoon because it says you don't know which one will give you profit <laughs> hallelujah amen is it this activity you did in the morning or this activity you did in the afternoon? Lucky you if both give you profit. It means that you have more to eat. That's when you send your children to better schools. Because some of you, where your child is learning, it's not that you want him to be there. It's because the, the money you have is what is forcing you. 
yuguka kamizani ni ndalama imene muli nayo. Some of you, where you sleep is not like that's where you wanted. Pamene magona, sikuri ndi pamene mafuna muzikona ya. You are being forced by circumstances. What can we do? And when you come to church, you hear me talk about finance, you're angry. Why are they talking about money in the church? Is it a business school? The school is a business school. Why can't they talk about heaven? And holiness. Let me ask you, if I may be honest with you, some of you, the way you are struggling financially, even holiness will not be, you think it will be possible, holiness. Do you know holiness? Because when you don't have anything to eat, and you see your friend buying ice cream, you know what you call him? Proud and wasteful. Proud and wasteful. Huh? When you see your friends eating ice cream, oh man, good, ah, under feet, I mean, under feet. Because you, you, you know, it's, 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 don't be poor. Tell your neighbor, don't be poor. Don't be poor. Don't be poor. Never tell you when you come to this church that you know it's okay. It's okay. You are poor. It's okay. Don't give you are poor. It's okay. It's, it's not in the Bible, sir. It's not in the Bible. I will tell you what Jesus did for you. Second Corinthians eight and verse number nine. He became poor. That you through his poverty might become rich. That is what he said. Whether you are going to become one or not, that's your headache. But he became poor. That I should not be poor. And my children will never be poor. I struggled when I was growing up. Because I was riding on my parents' ignorance. But when I came to knowledge, I said, I don't have to be poor. Yes, I don't have to. No, sir. And my children don't have to. Yes, yes. When my son finished school, I bought him a car. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is what you do with your children when you have money. I'm telling you, sorry. Sorry, be angry, but I'm telling you. We are Nico Mandu. You know, Muguziwa, it's better to have money, sir. This up with Nukala Nidalama. You are frowning your face. We Kukwin and Kope, you bought your, your son a car, so what? I'm telling you what I did. Nugusa is Venajita. And when he entered into marriage, the Adalo and Banja, I changed the car. Said so now this one was a bachelor car. Now you get a better one. Yes. Mane. Dalama. I did not get lono. Sinatengangore. Please. Parents, if you are a parent, fight to have what? Mane for the proper of your children. Not your child squeezing his face. At 19, the child is looking for the nine because the parent is doing... Look, you. You. Rise on your feet. <laughs> You know, some people they will be angry. This month, 
this month I'm teaching about money. Last month I was teaching about what? Faith. Huh? Last month I was teaching about what? Faith. A month before I was teaching about what? Huh? <laughs> As a bus around the house, I I were angry at my members. You know, take the car serious. I Next month, I may not teach on this, but this month I will teach you as much as you can, or as much as I can, what you need to know. September. September. The whole month. I will be talking about financial prosperity. The whole month. The whole You know what you do with money when you have it. Luke seven five. Luke seven verse five. You build churches. Yeah. Yes. Look at this guy. He built them a synagogue. You have built yourself a house. What is that? You think that is an achievement when your friends are building synagogues? You know, by the way, Pastor, I have got, you know, uh, in, in Blanta alone, four properties in. Uh, in Lilongwe, I have seven properties now. We are looking at Mzuzu. I think uh, uh, my wife will bought how many plots? Um, I think three. Yeah, so in the next three years, we are building three houses. That is for yourself. Build, have money to build something for God. I said, have money to build something for God. Have money to build something for Jesus. Yeah. You've done well to build a house for yourself or houses for your family, your children. But how about houses for Jesus? We have a church. That we started in Mchinji. How? Yeah. 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 A brother. A brother. One of us. Mod's wife. Said, Pastor. I have a passion for Mchinji. I want to start a church there. I will be going there. Peter. The other day you organized a football bonanza. And preached. You got a few people there. And he was going there every Sunday on his own pocket. Until the church was ready to send a full-time pastor in a change. A sister went to Zimbabwe, started PICC Harare there. On her own pocket. Mama, please, let's do something as a church. She said, no. I will register, I will open bank account, I will do everything. Started buying equipment. Yes. Nice pulpit, like glass pulpit like this. Yeah. Until the church was ready to send a missionary. We have a missionary in Zimbabwe. You, your own money is for sausage. And it's not that it's much. And so you know it. It's not much. Please, let's invest our money in things that have eternal value. Eternal value. I want you to pray to appreciate God for his will of financial abundance for you. Lift your voice. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Lift Bless your voice, everyone. 
Father, we give you thanks. Thank you, Lord, for your will of financial abundance upon our life. In the name of Jesus, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for your will of financial abundance. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your will of financial abundance. Thank you for your will of financial abundance. Thank you for your will of financial abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for your will of financial abundance. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. We thank you. We bless you. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. We magnify you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you for your will of financial abundance upon our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We begin to declare financial abundance upon your life. I'm enjoying abundance. I'm enjoying abundance. Somebody declare, declare, declare. I'm enjoying abundance on every side. I declare, I'm enjoying financial abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm enjoying financial abundance in the name of Jesus. I'm enjoying financial abundance, I'm enjoying financial abundance in the name of Jesus. Only abundance is my portion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Only abundance. I'm enjoying financial abundance. In the name of Jesus, I'm enjoying financial abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus, Raba Zanda Kataya da Rande Kede de Debe Zando Rota da 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 ba Zanda Rakata Global Bands Global Global Zanda Rebe Be Si Kanda Ya da 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 ba Zata Kaya Ya Be 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 Zete Kede Be Zanda da 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 All round abounds. Rete de 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 Be Si Anda da da ba Global on every side. That is the kind of abundance I'm enjoying. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of abundance. Thank you, Lord. Shakata rakada, basita rigadande. Yakata rakada, baba basita rigada. Shakata rakada, baba basita rigada. Zandoro bosaya da 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 ba. Yakata rakada, baba Thank you, Lord. I declare financial abundance. Financial abundance is my portion in the name of Jesus. Jesus, mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your hands. I decree this hour. Everyone is free from financial bondage. In the name of Jesus. Everyone is free from financial captivity. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree this hour. Money is coming to you. Financial miracles are your portion. I release upon you financial abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen to me. Financial hardship is not just a physical condition. It is something that also has a spiritual foundation. There are demons that facilitate financial hardships in people's lives. Tonight, every evil spirit assigned by the devil to harass you financially. 
By attacking your finances. Attacking your sources of income. Blocking your passage financially. I cause those demons in the name of Jesus. I cast them out of your life and out of your way. Out of the works of your hands in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. I scatter every satanic power against your finances in the name of Jesus Christ. Any force of hell withholding your resources. I Pull them down in the name of Jesus. I scatter them right now in the name of Jesus. I release financial abundance. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. You believe that? Give the Lord a shout of praise. I said a shout of praise. Please. We may sit down. Tito Calabas. You need healing in your body. You look at the word of God concerning your healing. Now may the Lord bless you. Amen. May he give you peace. Amen. Success and prosperity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm talking to you. Can I hear a louder shout of amen? Amen. Money shall come to you in abundance. Amen. I said in abundance. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you know that you know those your hands will handle real money, clap them for Jesus. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Psalm 23 and verse number 6. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen.